So here's the juicer model, uh, the final model, Mark III, uh, and we've imported it into uh, Plastic Advisor Mold Flow. Uh, and the first thing that we did when we had imported this in was to just check the geometry uh, uh, with respect to uh, uh, running the analysis as quickly as possible. Uh, check that there weren't any small features that were going to adversely affect the uh, process in time. So if we look at the summary of uh, the geometry analysis, we can click on model suitability here and we can see that uh, a very high proportion of the model uh, has got a very high suitability. There's a, some small portions that fall into this medium suitability uh, category and if we just zoom in onto the model here you can see that they're mainly concentrated around the top here uh, where these ridges meet uh, the flat section on the top uh, if we want to just uh, use the examine result tool and just click on them here we get a little explanation of, uh, of what's going on there uh, possible text or fillet uh, a small feature that is unlikely to uh, affect the result but may cause uh, uh, long calculation times uh, now we could go back into CAD and sort of smooth these curves off a little bit uh, but that wouldn't really be the design that we, that we, uh, that we wanted. It would be an, uh, uh, an approximation of the design. So given that these, uh, these small areas occupy uh, less than 1% of the model, uh, I'm happy to, to leave them in. Uh, and we've, ha we've actually run a few tests with these on, and they don't uh, uh, affect calculation times too adversely. So. Uh, so we're just going to leave those for the time being. If you look at the model complexity plot, uh, again, uh, it's it all falls into the low category. Uh, so the model isn't that complex, uh, and the package uh, shouldn't have too many problems processing the model. So the next uh, analysis that we ran uh, was uh, the gate location. Uh, analysis tool and what you can see here is the top half of the model we've selected as uh, uh, not a valid location for the uh, injection gate uh, because obviously we uh, we want this to be seen by the uh, end customer and uh, we don't want any injection points uh, ruining the look of this so the bit that uh, the algorithm can choose from is anywhere on the underside uh, or this this lip around the outside. So the next thing that we did was we we ran the uh, gate analysis with these conditions, and the summary from that. Uh, if we just look at that now, was that. Uh, the gate placement calculation place the gate on the underside of the model here in the center uh, it assessed that as the uh, optimum place to put it so then we moved on to uh, processing conditions uh, and we'd selected a material by this point uh, and this was the material that we selected it's from the Honam petrochemical company And it is JI320, uh, which is a polypropylene, uh, and it's commonly used in uh, in food packaging and uh, kitchen utensils. So uh, it's quite a suitable thing for a, a juicer to be made out of. And once we ran the uh, the molding analysis, uh, it selected a uh, mold temperature and melt temperature and an injection time which would provide optimum results for a, a I think we set this as a medium gloss part it wasn't a high gloss but it wasn't a rough finish uh, so it selected these uh, temperatures and injection times for us and then we applied those and uh, ran a full analysis of filling cooling and sink marks and if we just look at the summary of that analysis 
here it is so you can uh, see the fill time plotted there uh, the total fill time is about uh, 0.7 to 0.8 of a second and obviously if it's filling from the center from the underside of the center here uh, the bits that take longest to fill uh, are the bits around the outside uh, by the lip so if we just animate that you can see it fill in and yeah it fills fills those uh, bits around the lip last if you look at the confidence of fill plot you can see that uh, the program's confident that the whole of the part will be filled with uh, no problems at all uh, it's 100% high confidence of fill throughout the whole part uh, if we look at the quality prediction now again uh, the quality is predicted as uh, high quality throughout 100% of the part the whole part uh, is in green there now the next few, the pressure at the end of the fill and the pressure drop uh, we needn't be too concerned with those given that the quality prediction was uh, all at 100% but as you'd expect uh, the pressure at the end of the fill uh, is, is least around the outside uh, and greatest right by the injection point which is what, what you'd expect uh, as uh, more liquid comes in through the injection point and the uh, the pressure has to increase slightly to get it uh, to occupy the whole of the mould pressure drop, drop again uh, as you'd expect uh, the pressure drop is greatest around the outside uh, just because it's the furthest point away from uh, where the high pressure liquid is coming in the high pressure liquid is coming in at the centre point here temperature at flow front you can uh, you can see that the temperatures lowest again around the outside we've got this strange offset uh, here just because the uh, the way that the part was meshed when it came in uh, it was meshed slightly off center in the uh, in in its central point here uh, now that's just an anomaly of the meshing uh, which we can't control obviously in the uh, in the real uh, final uh, mold that we make we'll make sure the injection point is dead center so that uh, this plot should be symmetrical around that central axis so yeah that's just a quirk of the uh, of the meshing process when we uh, imported the part if you look at orientation of skin it's fairly uniform as you'd expect uh, it all radiates out from that central point Uh, average temperature again as you'd expect highest in the center where the uh, where the molten plastic is coming into the mold uh, if we look at air traps now you can see that that's quite favorable uh, all the air traps are concentrated around the outside of the mold uh, which would make it quite easy to put some uh, some vents in uh, just to get rid of the air from there weld lines we can see that there there are no well predicted weld lines in the part at all uh, which again is what you'd expect because no flow fronts meet each other uh, while injecting this part it's just a single flow front that radiates out from uh, from that injection location all the way out to the to the outside uh, if we look at the sink marks estimate we do get some sink marks predicted uh, just around these troughs uh, which could have something to do with the thickness changing depending on on uh, how you cut the cross cross section at this point you could argue that the thickness is changing slightly but if you look at the uh, maximum deflection of uh, the worst of the sink marks the red section up here it's uh, 0 0.01 point zero two of a, a millimeter which is is uh, more than acceptable for this sort of part Uh, if, and then if we look at the cooling quality again the cooling quality of the part is is all in the high 100% uh, in the high uh, so I shouldn't envisage any problems in uh, <coughs> injection molding that part at all